here we are with Mariela and hi. hi and in a different scene from last time when when we we spoke we had talked about Akashic records a and bit, yeah. a little bit and I was very intrigued and you said that we could do a a live the reading and you're going to explain if I'm butchering it all about how we're doing this uh, I just yeah, well. love this stuff I love anything uh, very well not so secretly if I say this but I'm um, super spiritual guy who um, I mean I've done everything from 10 day medita silent med meditation retreats to mm -hmm. healing circles and I just give me the open door and I will just jump on through it with both feet so I love this as you did yeah, and I didn't and know that. I didn't know because this is such a very specific level of spirituality. Yeah, yeah. Not everyone who does like yoga or meditation is like, yeah, yeah, this is for me. And when when yeah. I mentioned it, you were just like, you just I just saw you go like, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. oh, okay, you know, I can do this. We can do this. Yeah. You know, it, it, so there's a, a friend of mine wrote a book, and and she said it, it was it starts with open. Oh, I love that. I always think curiosity, but maybe that is, maybe curiosity is being open. Oh, maybe curiosity is going through the open door, but. Um... Yeah, because fear, when the door is open, when the fear, the door opens, like you can also respond with fear. So yeah. openness means nothing. Like oh, there's openness and then there's yeah. how do you deal with Like do you, yeah. do you, yeah. do you, is it fear or is it, oh, what is that? Yeah. Thus, yeah. it starts with, open then you can yes. choose do you want to go through the door or not or yeah. run away? open gives you an option yeah and then you so, decide do i back away or do i look what it is yeah do i follow this curiosity yeah, yeah. you know you say how not everybody is, is into this or even open to this and i think if you have some pretty heavy events happen in your life and depending on how you react to them it may or may not, because that's what happened to me. My, all of my spiritual journey, sorry, I can never say that without whiny accent. Spiritual journey, my spiritual journey began when my dad passed away. Hmm, and it actually common. began before he passed away because I was looking, like, frankly, I was looking to save him. How could I help him in any way? Western medicine, Eastern med anything and everything in between and far above and far below. And I just went off the deep end, uh, trying anything and everything, any way I could help him. And of course, what happened is that I got into it and I learned and my door was opened and I jumped right on in because I had a clear goal. How can I help my dad? And yeah. even if it's, it, even if it's, how can I help my dad transition mm -hmm. from I, life to death? I think that's and, such... and I did. I did, by the way. And I it think really because the, I think the moment you move from Western medicine to Eastern uh, yeah. way of perceiving life, you almost automatically move from helping him is not saving him, but yeah. it can mean how do I help him pass yeah. onto the next phase? Yeah. So I was yeah. immediately thinking, and then I think like my, the, what I've learned from the, I've become much more chill about life because of the Akashic records, because I understand oh, wow. now that there are like, literally, if I cannot do it this life, there will be another life. Yeah. Right. So if I cannot solve something, like, let's say you have some karma with a person or like, yeah. like a karmic contract with a person. And this person is not on that level, this life that they can do this with you, right? They, they, maybe you can heal your part, but if they're not ready to heal their part in this lifetime, yeah. then some people are like, they get really upset about that. But <laughs> I'm much more, well, you know, hopefully we can fix it next life. Like I did yeah. my part. Um, they're not doing their part, which is fine. It's their journey. Yeah. Right? So maybe we can do a next life. But it also made me much more relaxed about what do I want to achieve in this life? Because I'm like, my essence will move on, my soul. Yeah. So I'll just do the best I can to evolve to sort of the highest level I can reach in this life. Yeah. And then when my life is over, that will just be passed on. And then hopefully, of course, my next reincarnation 
is a bit quicker on the uptake that you can actually reach back to all these previous lives and learn yeah. from that. Yeah. Um, that's so always a bit of a... You, you, you just said, for example, next life, transition, reincarnation, past lives, go back to the past lives. It's so funny. Before my, my dad had passed away or was even in his last years or months, this conversation we, we wouldn't even be having. I, I would I'd be like, what what are you talking about? You're you're weird. Whereas not only now do I not think you're weird, I just think it's it's not only fascinating, I I feel bad for the people who cannot embrace this or at least be open to it. And mm -hmm. and and I'm not saying you need to fully jump in with both feet and and I always joke about how you need to move to Nepal and wear an orange robe and live in a monastery. It, you don't need that. How much of it in your life do you want? And I usually find like for me, I call meditation medication, right? It's one letter away from mm. medication. And if I don't do my, if I don't take my meditation in the morning. I have, I don't have as good of a day. And, and the more yeah. thorough and better my meditation is in the mornings, the better my day is. It's a clear corollary. And I do think that meditation is medication. Yeah, yeah. To a, certain, to a certain extent, like I'm, I'm also not one of those people who are like, oh, you have cancer. Well, if you meditate enough, yeah. right? Let's, I'm not one of those who are like, let's disregard Western medicine entirely right. because right. those people have also been inspired, right? Mm -hmm. so, so people who've invented certain things, they have been right. They they got the messages like yeah. like penicillin. Who the hell thinks that? Like yeah. I'm like, how do these things get invented? Now I kind of think that these people just like some of they call it downloads. Uh -huh. Like just yeah. you know, there's a little something just sort of like put into your brain, and then you're like, aha, let me try this. Where did it come yeah. from? We don't know. Yeah. Right. And so, so, and so many so many of those in inventions or discoveries came by accident, right? yeah yeah i'm like how many people died before they discovered bread right like what can you eat or what can't you eat right um but people died okay you just, i'm just like let me try this oh don't eat that berry because you know garrett didn't make it um but it does make me think like do sometimes like is, is there also a gut feeling that like you go through the forest and you're like yeah no, I'm just gonna not try that and yeah. then maybe somebody else is like you know why don't I try this one and you're like no I wouldn't and then the person dies you're like I knew this already yeah right yeah because we do have of course the gut feeling and the heart is very uh perceptive about what what we should avoid and what not yeah. um but yeah so I, I do think that when you say that I think that is very much like I love that the meditation medication but like I said like I do not think, I, I think the combination, yeah, I think we can prevent, sure. I think we can prevent a lot through having that kind of balanced life and doing like energy work and stuff like that. But I also think that sometimes, sometimes diseases, this sounds, this sounds really awful. Sometimes diseases, I'm not sure, I don't know what, I don't want to say need to happen, but often it gets, people get a purpose after it. Yeah or because of it, or they, yeah. so I'm not entirely sure whether I can, like the whole everything happens for a reason thing. Yeah. I don't think that is necessarily true. I think some things just happen, but we are not okay with these things until we have given them a purpose. So we give them a reason in hindsight. Yeah. I think that is small. So I don't think, oh, this, I don't think, oh, this, Palestine. I don't think that needs to happen for a reason, yeah. but I think we can all learn from it. I mean, I hope we finally do because yeah. uh, it look, doesn't look like the actual people who, who have, with any say are learning uh, the lesson hard enough right now. Yeah. But those things, I, I don't want to be like, oh, you know, that that we needed that as humanity. It's more like, okay, this is apparently how far we've gone. In, in, a, in, a, in the bad sense of the word, like this is how far we have removed ourselves from, you know, the loving light beings that we are inside. Yeah. Um, so let's learn from that then. Yeah. Let's, you, yeah. let's, let's say, okay, if this happened for a reason, what is the reason and what can we learn from this? Yeah. That's yeah. kind of how I try to view yeah. life. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. But I don't like saying these children needed to die or your kid brother needed to have that accident or your mom right. needed to die when you were young. Like, I'm, 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 but what we often see is that because these things happen, like you got this whole door opened yeah, uh, because your dad died. It doesn't yeah. mean that you're, this is why your dad died. Right, right. Or right. that he needed to for me to say. Yeah, so that I yeah. find really, I, I try to be careful saying yeah, everything happens for a reason. No, we, we can give everything a reason afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. And I do think that these things shift, uh, but I don't think they need to happen. I think that is the thing. It's like, I think things just, sometimes they're like, some, sometimes we need, we need to meet people and the universe will make it happen. But there yeah. are definitely things that I'm like, no, that is just bad luck. Like this person wasn't listening to this and this person wasn't listening to their guidance. And then that's when bad things happen. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Somebody is not listening to their intuition. So they're not driving at the right speed. And this kid is distracted and right accident. Yeah. So that's kind of how I try to. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Cool. Completely different topic. Well, <laughs> yeah. slightly, slightly related. related. Yeah, yeah, related. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, where do we start? I have no idea. <laughs> where do we start? Do you I, know I, what I, your Do you know what your Kasha records are? No, no. Good. That's a good place to start. Let's start. Let's start there. I, no. You know I what don't. I love. That about 99% of the people that I work with have no idea what the Akashic Records are. They're just like, this sounds interesting. We want to work with you. I really, I really love that. Because um, I always kind of assume that you show up because you already know what something. But they're like, no, what is it actually? It's just, I just felt this pull to work with you. Um, yeah. So what is it you actually do? Like, I was just meditating, but I don't know why. Or I'm like, oh, great. Well, let's start from the beginning. Um, yeah. So the Akashic Records... I see them as kind of this massive archive uh, on, and they exist on a metaphysical level. It's not like you can drive there, take a train and then just, you know, enter. <laughs> it's on a metaphysical level. So on a higher dimension. And I say archive because as the name implies, it's called Akashic Records. Everything, all our souls do in each and every lifetime is recorded there. So you can go in and, and so t time doesn't exist there, right? So it's it's past, present and future all in one. So you can go in there and look at, okay, so this is something that I'm struggling with right now. Where does this, like, where does this come from? And it could be that it happens from in, in, in this particular life, right? You can have blocked something from an early childhood that is now coming up for you that you need to work through but sometimes it's oh this is something that i took with me from a past life so when you go into the records it's literally just rows and rows of books so you can actually grab a book open it and see so it's literally when i say when i say an archive i mean it's like a library oh. Oh. Uh, and that's also how i visualize it so i'm always okay. working with books um i always get like i come in and i ask but like i ask okay this person is struggling with this or has this question about this what is uh, like where is the book that i need right and sometimes the yeah. book just falls into my lap and sometimes i have to go through a little bit of a search it very much depends on how open the person actually is to receiving the answers because sometimes there's a little bit of resistance that means i go yeah. like through a maze um sometimes um and so in the akashic records we have record keepers from what I understand, from what I've been taught, the record keepers are members of our soul family who are not currently incarnated. So they keep track of the records, right? So it's very possible that during the moment when we are not reincarnated, um, so when we're not on this earth, that we also fulfill that role in other people's records, people of our soul family. So sometimes I come across very reluctant record keepers because they're like, why are you here? And what are you? And that sometimes means it's a very big thing for a person. So then I have to sort of explain like, okay, so this is why I'm here. Like I'm, I was invited in here. Like, wow. um, uh, so the, I recently had that, that was really one, like, like, why are you like, what do you, what do you want? Uh, and they were really afraid that I was going to ask the wrong questions. 
which was great because that in, in that particular reading that guided me because when I didn't get any answers I was like oh wait this I already got the message like that this person was afraid it was not going to ask the right question so I was like oh I need to, to tweak that and then just this door opened I was like oh there are all the answers that's great so that was a really good warning actually so how I do this so I have my own method I um a lot of readers do this face to face. So we have a Zoom call, you have a question, we tweak the question till it's like usable in the records and then we go in together and then we find the answer to your question. I like to do a reading. I do. I like to do an offline reading. So I go in the hour before and I always invite the person I'm reading for to just meditate during the time or just, you know, if that's not your thing, just sit on the couch with a cup of tea or with your cat or whatever, just take the time for yourself. That is not necessary. It's not like my reading is not going to work if you're running around at work. That's not the case. It's just nice to take that time for yourself. Um, and then afterwards, I do the call and I just basically report what came to me and then we talk through it. So that's, I already went into your records. I'm already out of your records. And now we are going to uh, walk through what came up for me. And I'm really curious because this is the thing for me because I do this first part of lying when we do it together, I can immediately see if it resonates. And now I have this, I have four pages of notes. I'm like, let's see what's going to resonate with Bradley today. Because well, you might be like, no, that doesn't sound like me at all. Or that doesn't resonate. Uh, so that's, that's always, that's a bit of the tricky. That's, a, that's, I always feel like I'm always also jumping. Yeah. Right? Like, I'm just, this is trust for me. Like, let's just see. And sometimes it is, um, Sometimes things don't resonate and it's just because a person is not ready to, to okay. hear that, which I find really interesting because what we know about the Akashic Records is that if people are afraid of that, like if they're afraid of like, like it's, it's not like Pandora's box, right? It's um, they will deliver the messages that you're ready to hear. Okay. So if there is, so it's also, if you want to know, if you want to look ahead, Okay, what is next for me? How can I achieve that, et cetera, et cetera? They might not show you everything. They will just show you what you need to know right now so that you stay on course, right? Yeah. So it's not like there will be questions that I didn't have that with you in this case, but sometimes somebody has a question and I ask it and I just feel like I run into a wall. And if I keep repeating the question, they will kick me out of the records. Because <laughs> there are certain things that are very simple. You're not there yet. So you're not getting the answer. And sometimes it's, it's just a case of it's not relevant. So again, you're asking the wrong question. So you're not, this is not the root, like pivot, ask something else or something related. And then, oh, wait, that's how I needed to ask that. So it's, it's really, it's really is a conversation. And I'm literally okay. sitting here uh, with my notebook, talking to myself. That's what people will see when they walk past my house, <laughs> uh, talking to it. Like I literally have a conversation. Um, out loud with uh, oh, wow. with the records, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I really, I really do that, yeah. So that's kind of. I never. I I had to do. I had a guest recently, and that was the first time I did a. I did a, a reading while somebody else was in the house, and I did not like that. I I, I did. I it did. I did feel limited. So I'm like, oh, I'm not doing that again. If somebody is here, because uh, I have visitors sometimes. Um, the perk of living on a rare island in the middle of the mediterranean sea uh, people actually want to come here and go to the beach and stuff i will actually kick them out of the house next time because that was not pleasant for me like yeah. it was it was doable what i was like i'm very aware of the person uh in the house okay so what i always do so i when i go into some anyone's records i always end up in a different place and uh, so everybody has their own personal kind of library for me and i'm pretty sure that if somebody else does your records they will see something different i don't think it's a it's a, for some reason this is how i see it so i always this is completely unrelevant uh, irrelevant but i always like sharing uh, what i saw and some actually sometimes it is relevant uh, sometimes it isn't so let's just start there what i got when i got into your records it was i very much felt like industrial meets a lot of plants so there was like a lot of high ceilings, lots of steel, but then there was also a lot of plants. And then eventually as I started sort of walking into this space, I realized the back just disappeared into the forest. So it's like, it didn't feel like the forest was taking over the building or the mm -hmm. building was, it was 
it was encroaching upon it was very much like they were in balance ah. like so that was interesting because i would assume that you know the, the either nature is taking over or the building is yeah. you know encroaching upon the nature but it was very much like no but there was very much a sense of peace that there is this this yeah. huge build it was a huge building um yeah. and then there's you know half of it was sort of like taken over or maybe it was actually built into the forest so the the, the forest was um being taken into account when be it's not an actual building of course right it's all on the metaphysical level um and I didn't really get like I was sort of like at the first floor, just like because sometimes I, I I enter into an office space and I was like, okay, that that didn't happen. Uh, I, so I just stood there like, okay, is anyone here? Um, so then, what I if that happens, I just give like I gave you a form. So I said, okay, this is what I'm here for. These are Bradley's struggles. These are the questions that I have. And that's when I was led to this sort of nook. It really felt like sort of a loft space. That's how it was. It was like an open space, but there were like these nooks made. So there was this nook and it had like a couch and it had like a coffee table and there were a stack of books on there. So I'm like, okay, books, that's my corner. So I started with the question, uh, why does Bradley struggle with focus? Because your question, uh, like the question on the form is, what is your, what is currently your biggest or most persistent struggle? And you said focus. Um, so I immediately got the sense that this is a, an old pattern. So I immediately saw like the sort of timeline of like past lives, right? Like this sort of dun, 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 dun. like this is not something new. This is very much part of your system. Yeah. yeah. And then I the message I got, but well, it's not the same as attending to everything um, all at once, right? Which some people do. They attend to everything, so they attend to nothing. I really got the message that that's not what's going on. It's not that you're so distracted and you're working on everything that you're not getting, that that's not the, because that happens with some people, of course, right? You attend to everything, which means that nothing is getting your full commitment or the focus that it needs. So I really got the message. That's not what's going on here. Yeah. yeah. What is going on is it's more that there's too much inside of you and it just wants to get out. <laughs> Yeah. That's what I get. So it's not like you don't know how to, you don't know. It's not like you have str struggle like, oh, what is important to attend to? It's more like there's so much important. Yeah. And it yeah. just needs to, that's the really the sense I got. This sort of like bubbling over. Um, so yeah. I asked, I asked, is there an origin for this? Or has Bradley always been like that? And then I got this life. So we're talking, this is old stuff. I cannot tell you how many hundred years back maybe and even a thousand, I don't know. So the first thing I got was taste of freedom. That was the first message I got. And what I got was that after multiple reincarnations, so very early on, um, your, your, your first incarnations, there was no space for creativity, like literally. And that, I, I didn't get why it could be poverty or just being in a strict household or everybody just had their job. And yeah. there's just no space for that because creativity is sort of like you can only do that when your basic needs are being met. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, creativity is the second chakra level. And the first chakra is your uh, your right to exist and the fear of survival. So if you're, if you're surviving, there is no, you cannot rise up to the second chakra. So yeah. you do yeah. not have that creative impulse because yeah. there's no space for that. Um so after these multiple reincarnations where there was no space, your soul decided, I have enough of this. So they picked a family that was almost the exact opposite. And it wasn't, I first thought maybe because they were really wealthy, so they could give you everything. That was not it. It was, they could, it was not like they could give you everything. It was more that they allowed you to have that space to sort of tinker away. And, and they gave you the encouragement. And I really got this sense that, whoever your father was in this lifetime was a bit like an inventor, but a bit like, you know, somebody in the village who's like, everybody's a bit like, yeah, the guy's, I mean, he's useful. He's a bit weird because he's always, you know, doing his little things, uh, but he's useful. And sometimes he like, let's say one out of the 10 things he invents are actually useful. So we do pay attention to him. We have a certain respect for him, but we're also like, we don't really get this guy. Right. I got the thing that that was your dad. Right. Um, so there was a lot of and there was a lot of time you could spend with him in the workshop because 
like he loved that just and he was also he was very focused so he was just like doing his thing and and you got to see that and, and do that as well so then i asked okay this sounds like a gift actually right yeah so but it has this always felt like a gift to bradley yeah. and then i got it it was a struggle every time you ended up in a situation that was more rigid and structured and i uh, i got this life i cannot tell you when this was when you were uh, working as a soldier i don't think that was a voluntary thing i think that was more of a you know you're of a certain age and you need to um yeah and you were like the odd one out, right? All the men had the same sort of, you know, this is what we do when we're not fighting or when we're not training. And you were just always doing like, like always doing something, creating something, writing something and not like the obligatory letters to the girlfriend or the mother, but other things. And they were just right. like, they didn't quite know how to deal. Uh, with you so it, that, that's when when these the, these things were a struggle when you were forced to be in a more rigid pattern right so I asked okay why does it feel like a struggle now in this particular lifetime because you're not a soldier you have the freedom to create right now yeah. um so this is interesting because I'm like that is a really spe very specific answer I'm wondering <laughs> I'm wondering how much this resonates I got that you are much more aware of, of your mortality this lifetime. Yeah. And also then, so he hasn't had to think about leaving a legacy before. There's mm -hmm. never been space. And I don't know whether that was because you never reached a certain age. Um, so it wasn't on your radar. Um, and I also got he's Bradley's also much more conscious of reception so how his work might be perceived than he was ever before so I really got the sense that you often do this for yourself and now it's much more like outward focused like I bring yeah. something to the world and then what do the people think of that um so I ask why is why is Bradley so much more aware and conscious of it in this lifetime and I got world is, seeing the world as an oyster. There's freedom that you haven't had before. And then that freedom also comes with a certain limitation. And this is where it became really sort of a vegan, <laughs> a very intertwined. I got that back. So all those lives, it was just part of who you were, right? It was just sort of like who you were. And now it is what you do. So, okay. but at the same time, it was never, so I said, it, it, it's, um, this is where, where I was like, why, what are you trying, what, what are they trying to show me? Other people didn't perceive it as this is who you are, right? Um, that was just something that you did when everything else was tended to, and you had the freedom to just, you know, do your thing. So it was very much, it, it's, it feels like a bit of like a contradiction to me. Um, but, the, but the difference between it's just something that is part of you to this is something that I do, that I actively put okay. into the world, that's yeah. the difference. Okay. And so I asked, and this is, I already told you before you hit record that some Freud came in. Um, how, does, how does that uh, affect Bradley's creative process right now? And so this is, I, I, I think I got it through a Freudian explanation because I'm very familiar with psychoanalysis. Um, but when you, so this is how Freud and also Jacques Lacan explain the, the process of becoming into the world of becoming a subject. There's a child and the mother. So there's a, there's a child and the mother and it's symbiosis. And then the father intervenes and then you get the triangle. Okay. So it's the father who breaks, makes the break between the child and the mother, because the child yeah. and the mother are this. So yeah. how they wanted me to explain that is that before you and your creativity were like, you had the symbiosis. And in uh. this life, something came in and, 
And this is so, so the father creates the, the separation between mother and child. So in this life, something came in that made you separate from your creativity. So now there is a bit of a distance. So you understand that you and your, I think your creativity and you are still the one, but for some reason, it feels like in this life, it is what you do. Um, so what I got was that in this life, you are being asked to define it, to give it meaning. And you can only give meaning to something once it's been separated from you. This is also okay. what, before we hit report, also said it becomes a bit philosophical. This is what I was talking about. Yeah. So you, you are asked this life to think about it. And that uh, to think about something, you have to put it outside of yourself. Okay. That's what I got. Um, so, uh, and because I'm like, I, I'm all for philosophy, but I also like practical answers. So I asked again, okay, so, but how does that affect Bradley's process like on a day-to-day? -day? Yeah. Right? Because that's what we yeah. want to know. Yeah. Um, and then I got the answer because he measures things by standards that aren't necessarily his own. Mm. So that was an interesting one for me. Yeah. Does that resonate? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for because sure. for me, yeah. knowing you, I was like, really? Uh, so I was like, hmm, okay. So that, because yeah. that was like when I got like, okay, can we get this in normal language? <laughs> normal. What was the effect of this whole process of the, the sort of like the symbiosis being broken? Um, so then, because you mentioned perfecting, and that was a really interesting thing. That's why I love the form, because I can pick things from that. Uh, yeah. just from people are just typing I was like oh let's uh, I, I just sort of like home in on certain things I'm like hmm this is interesting so I asked okay what is it about perfecting uh, certain things that doesn't speak to Bradley because that's what you said you said what did you say you said oh you love that like, you want to create new things instead of perfecting one thing yeah that's what you said yeah. so I was like, okay so what is it that doesn't speak to you necessarily and i got that you haven't embraced that as part of the creative process the perfecting part i haven't embraced yes. that part as part of the creative process yes and i see this a lot with my because i like i'm an editor as well i see that a lot like there's people who love the editing process and there's people who just love the first draft process right and most people who love love the white page and just typing new words they feel very unproductive when they're in the editing phase and it's because they have not they haven't yet embraced that like writing a book it is part of that process um so that's the same i, I kind of got like oh that's kind of similar uh um similar answer here and then i, I asked okay so why hasn't he like, why hasn't he uh, embraced that? And then I got, because, um, and this is where <clears throat> my handwriting fails me. Okay, I got, okay, so it, you created because you were creative, right? It was never before this life. It was never something that you wanted to put into the world with intent. So you haven't embraced it yet because you are still getting used to taking it seriously. Yeah. That's what I got. Yeah. Um, so I asked, okay, so but now that's what he's doing. Now he's trying to bring something into the world with intent. And I got, yeah. yes. And that means professionalizing it. That means taking that next step. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I got, okay, so is that the thing? Is the professionalizing, which is of course very much connected to the perfecting. Yeah. Yeah, um, sure. is that what Bradley is resisting yes that's what I got I, so I'm like okay so why why does he resist wow. that and then so this now now I'm really curious what your answer is going to be I got because he hasn't figured out like at the very deepest core of him why he does what he does he hasn't he's never had to define it before it was always something he got away with Yeah. So that's a very that's, deep point. Does, does that resonate? Absolutely. 
Okay, because yeah. I was like, I was like, it's it's kind of it's, the Akashic records aren't mean because they're like they're for your optimal growth. But I was like, oh, I wonder how he's gonna say it when I'm like, because you, you haven't figured out why you do what you do, uh, and you get away with it. That's the really like it's something you always got away with. Yeah. So I feel like the sort of beating around the bush kind of feeling, right? Like the like because you you mean you are a smooth talker. Yeah. So you can sort of wind your way. Yeah. Uh, around this conversation so I asked okay does Bradley need this in his life to get where he wants to be and I got yes but he also needs to keep the play so don't go okay. don't go for board in like um so I, I was like how do I explain it and then I got you need to have this balance between taking yourself too seriously and not seriously at all so you need to ask yourself um at what level are you taking yourself seriously enough? So where is that balance yeah. for you between taking yourself way too seriously and not taking taking yourself seriously at all? Like where is do you need to find that middle ground? Like where are you? Yeah. Where is that for you? Um because there is a middle ground, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, can I can I give a, an example? Yes. Yeah. So uh before we recorded, I was just saying how I've been doing a lot more public speaking, mm -hmm. which I'm thoroughly enjoying. And in 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 typical Bradley fashion, I I I could give a speech every week. I I could give a new talk every day. Because like you say, I'm just a creating machine. And that's me. That's who I am. And that's how I like it. I like it that way. I I'm happy to give a new talk every day. I have a new a new idea every day. And like you said, at some point, you know, it, well, like the, the one father in one of the stories, you said he creates 10 things. One of them is useful or practical for the village or whatever. And yeah. nine, maybe, maybe not so much. And that's fine. I'm good with those odds. I like those. But I also like creating the 10 things. And I don't know which one, in the, if, when, when I start, which one of the 10 is going to be the, the one. Or which of the hundred is going to be really the one, or which one of the thousand is really going to be the one. And so, but like you say, I've just been plodding along doing that. And that's been fun because, because I enjoy it. This is how I get my energy. This is how I get, I get my creativity by creating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so of course. I, I, I make more and I just get more. Mm -hmm. My one idea leads to more ideas and more talks and more books. So but then, so recently, like I was saying last weekend, I was in a competition for public speaking. And so for this one, I didn't have to give the same speech as I did previously at previous levels, but I wanted to because I had practiced it quite a bit. And so this one talk, I must have rehearsed it, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 times. And I never do that. Just like books, I write them, they're done, bye-bye. I don't over edit i don't over analyze I, and i'm on to the next topic but this example of this competition where i wanted to do well and i wanted to okay well this gets a little bit interesting because uh, as i told you according to the public i won the competition mm -hmm. right according to the jury i did not and so this is a little bit related to what you were saying earlier. Like, why am I doing this? Who's it for? Is it for me? Is it for someone else? Who's the audience? And in this answer, I think a really practical answer here would be, I'm doing it for the audience. I'm not mm -hmm. doing it for the jury. But yeah. I also, I know, I know enough about the, this particular organization. And I know the jury wants these certain things and they check boxes. And that I didn't, I didn't necessarily check all the boxes. And I knew, I, I consciously knew I was doing that but I'm going for the audience. So, however, previously, real Bradley or deeper Bradley, I don't even do the, I don't even do the competition. I just create a new talk every day. Yeah. And so, but this is really interesting now because you're saying find that balance between the professionalism and the play. And I can, yeah, I can see that. And I've been way in play zone. You know, I, I've written 39 books and probably 38 of them are in play zone and one it's my bestseller the one that sells the most 
is on the more professional side, but using the words you're using, professional. Right? Mm -hmm. I did more to. There's, the, the, there's a different intent behind it. Yeah. 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 I think and, that is the professionalism yeah. is an intent, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting. I, uh, you know, we're talking here we are mid 2024. And this is a recent phenomenon for my, for me, what you're, what you're talking about, this, this finding this balance and, and which side do I want to go on? Do I, do I want to just stay in the playground and just play all the time? Cause like you said, I've been getting away with it or do I want to, or need to shift to the more professional for the reasons, you know, what are the reasons? Yeah. Why do I want to do that? And I love that your records say that the shift is not like this. It's more yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. It's not like, yeah. oh, I've been doing this. I need to do this. No, it's like, yes. okay, I need to stay in the play. Yeah. But, and yeah. to me, this is also about taking yourself seriously and honoring yourself and your own yeah. potential. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, because if the thing is, if you were happy, if you were happy living the life, like, your dad at some very old life did right just you know yeah. tinkering about a bit um sometimes you know you have a win and sometimes people look at you yeah. like you're insane for inventing this thing right if but you are clearly seeking for more yeah so then the yeah. question becomes how do i get and so if you were not seeking for more i'd be like there's nothing wrong with what you're doing right keep having fun yeah. but so now the question becomes, how can you keep having fun, but just pivot more towards, but I can have, can, where can I, where do I, where's the line between I'm still having fun, but I also honor my yeah. true abilities. Yeah. And what I, and, and for me, and this is what I, since I started working with the records, believe in more and more, everybody came, I, mean, I already believed it now i feel it everybody came here for a particular reason so are you going to honor that or not i think that's that's the balance and like i said it's not from play to this right it's more right. like I, if I, you're I here now it's, it's more like okay can we find the middle ground so that's not a massive shift that's just so you don't have to be this person. And I don't think you are that person. I'm not, and I couldn't be. I, I could act it, I suppose. Yeah, don't, that's not, we don't want that. Because no. the reason I think your audience, like I love that you're, the, the audience is like, yeah, you clearly won. Because I think that's way more important than what the, the jury thinks. Cause, exactly. Because yeah. jury, jury assessment is from the head. Yes. A lot of it is, is, is from, I'm sure yeah. they also look at how things enter. Yeah. Right. But an yeah. audience isn't thinking about form and structure right. and whether yeah. you're hitting all the right notes. Right. The yeah. audience just knows, is this resonating? Yes or no? Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that could be, and this is interesting because I got the question afterwards from people who they know the organization, they know me and they say, so Bradley, which, w w if you could only choose one, what do you want? Do you want to win over the audience or win over the jury? And of course, and of course my answer is, well, both. But if I could really only choose one, I'd rather have the audience. Another comment I got was the audience is the real world. The jury is this particular organization on this particular day and these particular people. With certain, yeah. para like they have a, like a paradigm yeah. and parameters. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They have a particular view. Yeah. These people are there because they look at the world through a particular lens. Yes. And they yeah. just want to see whether you fit that lens or not. So it's exactly. like, eh, no, yeah. uh, and that's right. not, so that is exactly not, that's, that's, that's the world. If you're like in a job interview. Yeah. Do I yeah. fit with what these people want of me? Yes. Yeah. But if you, if you, if you want to engage a particular audience, then that's what you should focus on. Yeah. 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 And I get that because certain, I remember the shift. <laughs> I'm getting that. I'm getting to that age. I remember when we got the shift in all those talent shows where they started moving from uh, just a jury to that the audience also got a vote. Oh, right, right. Yeah, like Eurovision Song and that Festival. Is stuff like that, yes. And I'm thinking X Factor, like all those shows I... that started in the Netherlands. Um, yeah. 
like that's a, like that was a very I remember that we could text message if we wanted this singer to win. Yeah. That was like yeah. a, and that was like a teenager I think at the time. Um so that was that's a very particular um under, that they also understood that there is a difference between how somebody sort of like how an, a, a, a jury sees someone and how yeah. people yeah. living breathing you who do not have these particular notions about what a good performance yeah. is or why they just they yeah. just vote with their hearts so so you and i know each other from the book world yes. and my story is very similar with my books i will get nine out of ten or you know it's like a typical bell curve right i'll get the people who don't get me at all mm -hmm. then i get the people who kind of get it then there's like the bulk of the people are like okay i think it's probably good but i'm not sure i understood it then i get oh, that was really good. And then I get the, oh my God, you are the greatest thing since sliced bread and I love you and you're the greatest thing ever. I think we talked about this during the last yeah. time because yeah. you said there was somebody like, uh, it was I think it was about your audio book. So somebody's yeah, like, yeah. like, yeah. like <laughs> I can never listen to this guy ever again. Like, right. oh my God. And then there was also this person that I don't care what else he's going to publish, Yeah, you know, as long as he... Like I will listen to him, like until right. my. No, I don't think she said until my dying day, but just to get right, the gist, right, right. right? So it's like, but yeah, you can cry over that, or you can go, oh look, audience, not audience, perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we so actually, with the profession, okay, let's keep going. Let's yeah, keep going. because we get to this. Okay. We get to this actually, so that's interesting. Um, um, because yeah, we can talk forever about this. Yeah. So my next, so my my the previous question was like, um, like, do you need that sort of level, that sort of like finding the balance to get where you want to be? And then, so my next, my question after that was, how can Bradley start accepting this part of the process that this is actually a part of the process? Because like for someone like me, that is so obvious. But for a lot of other people, they're just like, why do I have to do that too? It's the same with the marketing. It is part of the process. Yeah. Uh, so how do we embrace it instead of like sort of fighting it? And then I got that you need to really, really, truly ponder your why. Why do you want to create the things you want to create on the deepest of levels? So again, I got the sense that you got away with this answer for a bit. Yeah. So deep down, like very deep, like when you think you found it, dig deeper. Like, what is it that you're here to say? What is the message? What are you trying to do here? Yeah. Um. And then I asked, because I wanted to go, because you said what I, I always ask uh, in my form, like, is there anything you've thought you've, you've tried to overcome this like obstacle or to work on this struggle? And you said, well, I moved, I I, I moved from working on 49 things to five things. So yeah. like, that's, um, so just, just to be sure, um, I asked, does Bradley work on so many projects at the same time? Um because he's inspired all the time or does he do that so he doesn't have to ask uh, doesn't have to think about these deeper questions why he's doing things you know just because mm -hmm. i like to throw out the meaningful <laughs> like the yeah. like let's get really honest here and then i got no he really is a creative machine so your akashic records acknowledge that you are really a creative machine they just said bradley just needs to learn to recognize when it is time to shift gears. And this is where balance comes back. So perfecting something is a completely different gear than sheer creation, Yeah. right? Sheer creation is put them in five and just go. And yeah, maybe yeah. perfecting is like one or two. Yeah. I'm sure you drive stick now you're in the Netherlands. So yeah. you know what I'm yeah. talking about. <laughs> um, it's not like, what do I have here? I write, uh, I don't have stick here in Cyprus because it's, very hilly um so it's like what do you have drive reverse right neutral that's it neutral that's it yeah yeah um so it's again the balance so it's not the constant moving forward you need to balance yeah. that like sometimes you yeah. just need to you know um yeah. pull over to gears. the side of the road sometimes that too like sometimes you just need to park and yeah. be like okay what now like, what yeah. am I doing? Yeah. yeah. But but also, I think it's important that why they said it, it's, it's a whole other gear, perfecting. Perfect, perfecting, perfecting is not parking. 
Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's 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 why it's 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 a sh it's a sh it's a gear shift. It's not yeah. halting the motion. And I think that, and I am yeah. now thinking about all those clients I have that are like, I hate it that I'm not writing new words. It doesn't feel productive. You're still moving towards something. Yeah. You're still you, in you know, motion. The the gear thing is interesting because a a good friend of mine who knows me pretty well, and she also. It's very sweet of her, but she says, you know, Bradley, I know you have these brilliant ideas and you do. Some of them are awesome. Like, I just wish you would slow down sometimes so I could catch up with the ideas because I would like to understand the ideas on a deeper level. But you're just so in fifth gear that I I can't keep up. You know, and she she wasn't saying like, oh, I'm whatever something or i'm more something than her i'm smarter or faster or whatever no she's just with that idea because it's my idea and i'm in fifth gear in my car and i'm in fifth gear and i know exactly what it is and what i'm doing and why it's important and i know the whole deal and i it's kind of like i mean i don't i lost the visual now but it'd be like here jump into this car in fifth gear on the highway friend <laughs> yes like wait wait wait, 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 wait. Can, can we just pull over and stop please so i can switch drivers <laughs> you know no you're like, just no, like just, you just, just you're just driving past them 100 kilometers an hour 120 maybe depending on which yeah. highway you have in the netherlands and yeah. then oh, 130 i think even it's on some of these days and then it's like come on hop on board yeah come on come yeah. on in and she's you're saying, just like my door is open yeah door door what's your problem door is open and they're just like yeah okay and, so and, and, yeah yeah go ahead like finish that no, no 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 that's perfect that's perfect the door's open come on in why aren't you getting in my car yes so i so this is i think this is a beautiful metaphor for your audience is that part of your professionalization and also your reach is that you have to take into account that your audience needs time to hop on board yes I think that is a beautiful, I love that you bring that up because it fits in so well. And they, no matter how brilliant your ideas are, yeah. people cannot hop on board. Yeah. If you don't sometimes say, you know what, here's the station. Yeah. I'll just breathe for a second here. Everybody can hop on board. And then we yeah. slowly, slowly, so I see yeah. a train now, like one of those older ones. Yeah. Like, and then come on the journey, but you, you have time to... Um, time to catch up with me time yeah. to get used to this to the speed and then we'll reach the next station and you can yeah. get off and just be yeah. like okay that was a that was a train right not to mention we haven't even talked about are we going to paris or frankfurt or copenhagen right which train are we even on because you want to get on the train to frankfurt i'm already cruising in the train to copenhagen you know because i'm on to the next journey i'm you know that's that's the last book that you're already on the last journey. Your no, 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 just no. Sort of... I, I mean, that's like, that's the most, yeah. the second most yeah. recent book is to Frankfurt. I'm already on the next book, which is the train to Copenhagen. Yeah. So, and this is of course, and so then, and so and now I am vision, and I didn't even ask about this. So now I'm just wondering to what extent your audience is a bit lost to. Oh, totally. Because totally they cannot lost. track you. No, exactly. They're totally lost. And except for the crazy oddball weirdos like me, who are like happily jump on jump into a car at 100 kilometers an hour and say like let's go right but there's so few and far between and that's why i have certain fans whatever readers who are like i totally get it this is amazing let's go to copenhagen fifth gear all the way let's go right what but, i see there's now. so few of them right that 99 of them aren't the trains left the station they're just like so what I see now is that you're on the highway, fifth gear. And then, so you're, you're, you're true, you're super fans. Yeah. They're on the top of another car <laughs> and they're just speeding by so they can slide through your window, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, That's exactly. kind of what I'm seeing, right? right and then, right. and then your other, and then, so you're, you're in fifth gear, but you're going way too fast, right? You're going way yeah. too fast to speed. Right. So the rest of your audience <laughs> is sort of like, Right. That sounds kind of interest. Oh, it's gone already. Yeah. 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 That pretty much sums yeah. it up. Yeah. Yeah. I love that we got this visual. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's something to work on, maybe. 
Yeah. <laughs> Maybe something to think through. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So then you, so you, you ended actually. So I did, I asked some questions. We're almost there. Um, because at the end, I'm like, what do you hope to get out of the reading? And you said clarity, courage, and confidence, the clarity to know what to do, the courage to do it, and the confidence to finish and succeed. So I was yeah. like, how about I shape that into questions? Okay. So I asked, what clarity can we give Bradley today? Um, so I get it's Bradley's time to shine, but to do so, he needs to level up. And that means get rid of the noise and fine tune your message. Okay. So really, so that gets back to the why, like on the truest, deepest level. But the funny thing is, I think that to get there, you need to slow down. Yeah. And I'm wondering whether in that slowing down, your audience has a chance to catch up. Yeah. While you, instead of creating the next best thing, you actually sit and like, okay, why am I doing this? Yeah. Yeah. They have this, I, I sort of feel like this collective breath when I say that. Yeah. Um, so how aware can Bradley find the courage to do this? And then I get, okay, so truly knowing your why will go a long way because that no that knowledge will drive you forward because that then becomes your, well, yeah, your drive. You know why you're doing it. And I'm also wondering now whether that will then give you the energy that new creation usually gives you. So maybe you can swap that out a little bit. Mm. Yeah. Well, then instead yeah. of, because I understand that, right? Like the more you create, the more you create. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. just how it, I know that. Yeah. That's how it goes. Like the more you write, the more you write. That's just how yeah. it is. I don't know why. It's just, it's just what it is. Um, so I'm wondering whether, so it's kind of is like, that is how you have your, how your drive, you know, stays in motion, but maybe this knowing your why will take over a little bit. So you, you, have less need of the next project because the drive comes from a deeper internal place yeah that's just i'm just wondering that's that's just me trying me as myself trying to connect all the dots because um, that's something that i'm very good at like what would you just like how how is this all connected yeah and then of course how or where can bradley find the confidence to finish succeed this is where we get to um, <laughs> the woman who's like, I don't care what he publishes next. I'm going to listen to the book, right? right? Yeah. So this is yeah. this is the person on top of the car trying to catch up, but just sliding into yeah. your window. She's like, I'm on this right. Like this is, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, it. so because the answer I got was Betty needs to look at how his work has been perceived and really look into what resonated with people and why. So sort of like okay. find out the essence of why people connect to your work and then use that, like use that knowledge. Um, oh yeah, that, oh yeah. so uh, home in on that. What's the message they find? And is that the message that you want to be sharing in its purest form? Like, and how can you share it in its purest form? So how can you distill from how it's been perceived what that message actually is? And what are people getting from what you're doing? And then I would say, like, and how can you then bring that to the, how can you slow down enough so that other people can get a, say, a taste of that too? Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. So final question is always for me. Is there anything else Bradley needs to hear today? And this, and this is really funny because I got this entire thing in English and I got this one in Dutch. Um, okay. I got, I moet het kaf van het koren scheiden. Do you, do you know that idiom? Um, no, I don't know that phrase, but I can I can envision it is, something. The like, English version is separate the wheat from the chaff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think this resonates, this goes back to the noise. So you have to become really clear about what it is, what you're doing, and that will clarify your message. So that's what I got like, sort of like all these things you're doing, what are you really doing? And then I was told, go back to the tarot deck that you pulled the card from for Bradley in 2019 and show him that card again. Do you remember? Oh, can you see it? Do you remember this baby? Do 
What did I it say at the top? It's a it's a second of ones. So it's a two at the top. Do you remember this? This is this is the wow. card I drew for you in 2019. Um in the Edinburgh Castle. Yeah, in, in, in the cafeteria, actually. I think we were having yeah, lunch the, or something. The castle castle, yeah. 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 And then yeah. the message was all about direction. And that you like that there is a oh I love I love my new background, but this is not very conducive. Um that you have a tendency, like there are a little bit of offshoots on the branches, and that's your yeah. tendency to follow yeah. those. And so back in 2019, we already had the, the conclusion that you need. So the mess, the keywords of this particular card is determination, and um, I'm really trying my best here. Uh, is determination and um, direction. Wow. So before I left, they were like, "Show him the card again that you." And I don't usually remember this stuff. Yeah. I don't know why yeah. after five years I remember that this is the card I drew for you. Amazing. But do you remember you it? Remember. Do you remember? I don't. I I don't remember. I remember being there with you and doing this, but I don't remember that card. No. Yeah, Although it's, fun. you know, what's interesting. Um, uh, somebody just shared with me, and actually, this is this is so relevant. I just shared with me a well. Oh, she couldn't find it. But she described it and she said that it's a graphic that she, it's a, some known thing that, that she just was reminded of. And there were two, it was stick figures, two stick figures, and they're both standing next to stick ladders. And one ladder, the, the rungs of the ladder, like the places mm -hmm. you hold onto, were, were so far apart that the stick figure couldn't even reach the first rung of the ladder. So that stick figure was at the bottom of the ladder. The other stick figure at the other ladder, the rungs were close enough together where they could they could climb up. And so, and this is, I mean, back to going too fast, right? Right. So that ladder, they're both tall. They both reach up to the top, mm -hmm. but you can't even use, that ladder is not functional because you can't get from one step to the next. Whereas the other one, the steps are close enough to each other that you can keep you know, one step at a time to get to the final destination. And you can keep your momentum as well. Yeah, keep your momentum. And so the word, one word I've been using recently is tiny wins, little successes, right? Tiny wins. Yeah. And maybe this is back to, you know, we're back to the train and it's, you know, sure, we're going to Copenhagen, but, we, you know, we, we should stop five times to pick up other passengers or whatever. It's not, it's not a nonstop direct 130 kilometer an hour train but the, the way you're going right now it is it is oh i don't stop anywhere i just yeah, and why aren't so you on board with me why didn't you just hop on board like when, when we left utrecht yeah or yeah, wherever yeah. wherever the hell the, <laughs> the train to copenhagen maybe it sounds yeah. yeah yeah so you need to, you need to become the train that actually has stops and then says Hey, anybody else want to hop on board? Yeah. I have a cool thing for you. I have a cool story for you to tell. Yeah. You no, know, the I, it's super cliche, but it's the journey, not the destination. You know why it's why things are cliche? <laughs> because they're true. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So similarly, I actually don't even care about Copenhagen. I just like the train ride. It's the journey. I just want to be on the train. I just want to climb up the ladder. I don't even care where the ladder leads to. And and that's you know that's a little bit my no not a little bit that's a lot my why. You know in, enjoy the journey, enjoy the train ride, and and in fact let's slow it down a little bit. Well, I think that's where you are right now. Like, how can you then slow it down so you can enjoy it with more people? Yeah. Yeah, because I'm on that fast train, but I'm all alone. It's uh, I, I when I when I grew up, I had one of these cards. Um, it's actually this is a sort of a childhood trauma for me. I think, um, I think it's it's one of the, I think my mom gave it to me, and the, the 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 card actually had like this mountain 
top, right? Like snow. And then there was a guy on it and the card said, it's very lonely at the top. And I'm now wondering whether my mom gave it to me back then because she already knew that I was going places that she had no intention for me to go because that just mean I was separating myself, uh, like moving places and stuff like that. Yeah. And some yeah. people don't like that. Um, yeah. But it is true at the same time that, you know, it is it can be very lonely um, at the top. And I would I think back about that father person, right, in that life is that there was a certain level of respect in the village mm -hmm. but except for you he was all alone in his workshop and people really didn't get him yeah because he was so yeah. in that right and yeah. and that is fine if that's who you want to be yeah but you're i think you're too much of an extrovert yeah yeah to be I, that I want to train to be full can you you do this thing to connect yeah that's what I get just from knowing you, not from this reading, yeah. but just from knowing yeah. you um, like, and, and we know from meeting in Edinburgh that yeah, conference, conference was nice, but it was the retreat, the time yeah. to meet people, to have conversation that was gold. So yeah. it's by going to, like, and this is also why we at one point had a discussion that Edinburgh was like perfect and then you went to Las Vegas afterwards and you're like yeah. completely different because it's just about the conference there's very few time very little time to um and opportunities to to actually talk to people like because of how it was set up we had the time to sit down somewhere and drew some tarot cards yeah yeah because of the way it was set up yeah. right um so for you, I think in you, you, where you are in the journey is like, okay, this has been great fun. I've wrote 39 yeah. books. Um, now I need to slow down so that my audience can, you know, get with me in this. Yeah. Yeah. But what I got was like, once you know your why, I think that will slow you down um, very much so. Um and this leveling up, right? This sort of like becoming really clear on your message. But also I think keeping the sort of the gear shifting in mind as well. And and, or, and and the empty train. Yeah. Like maybe you need to move from the train to Copenhagen, which is like one of those, what's it called in, in the... Oh, the Hoge Snelheids line. I don't know what that is. What's that in English? Yeah, high, high speed train or... Yeah, maybe you need to become a bumeltreintje between Utrecht and Amsterdam that goes like through Breukel and stuff. <laughs> like the one that has every bloody stop. Right. That takes like 40 minutes to get to Amsterdam right. or maybe longer. Right? It's a completely yeah. different sensation. Yeah. Yeah. We call it, the, we, I don't know how you, how you would call it in English. We call it a bumeltrein. I have no yeah. idea where that word comes know. from. <laughs> That's well, how my that, family, we call that. Yeah. Well, it's funny what they call it here, the, the sprinter, but uh, the, uh, here in Netherlands. Yeah, oh, so that's what it's called nowadays, of course. Yeah, yeah so the sprinter, yeah. because it's, it, it just... Yeah, sprints yeah. from one to the next, yeah. Yeah, and you think it was... A, that those are the slowest ones, because they just do these tiny sprints, yeah. and then there are many stops. Yeah. Also, that, that's the official word for it now. Yeah, I think... Um, you know, the, is the, all this is... With your with your idea, Utrecht to Amsterdam, small train. You say bommel, bommel train. But that's I think that's what my family used to call it. it was like oh, it is the idea of like it just chugs along. Yeah. Instead of yeah. one of those fancier like two levels. Right. You know, it's right. one of those that you know might not have toilets. So I definitely think that we now call it a sprinter. We now have a name okay. for it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And I like that you said Utrecht to Amsterdam. It's not not Amsterdam to whatever Berlin. Right, it's a. It, this is a little bit then related to Tiny Win. Tiny Win is Utrecht to Amsterdam. It's a short distance, and, and we're going to get and, it done. And, and getting we're people succeed. like and getting people on board. Yeah. Like yeah. I don't even know where it passed. Like I only know Brokele. That's that's like yeah. I think it's the first stop. I don't know what because I never took that. I think I took it once by mistake, and I was like, right. oh god, because I wanted to go to right. Amsterdam, and that's usually yeah. quite fast. <laughs> uh, and I was like, oh god, now I'm stuck in this one. Um, yeah. Yeah, so maybe, so, yeah. You know, the tiny win, you say my my why, and I think tiny win is 
at least part of it because I, I want, I spent, I, I whine and moan about this. I spent like eight years or nine or something. Uh, and I say like dreaming and whining and moaning and thinking and talking and chatting and wondering and wishing and hoping to write my first book. And I, like, and I never then did. you did NaNoWriMo. Yeah. I don't, right. I, I don't actually know what happened when I, how I, well, I know I do know. I do know what happened when I started. I was like threatened slash invited by a friend to uh, get my damn book done. Right. So it took an external party to invite me to do it, to finish something. So I wasn't finished. Well, I wasn't even doing it at all. I wasn't writing at all. I was just dreaming about it. And that's also one of my things. I don't want you, you know, I don't want to talk about the train from from Amsterdam to Hong Kong. That's a massive, huge journey. I like your Utrecht to Amsterdam. Let's get the Utrecht to Amsterdam done and finished and awesome. And, and, also, but, and that doesn't mean you cannot take a similar train to, like, it doesn't mean you can go to Berlin. Yeah. Nobody says yeah. you can, you don't, nobody says you have to stop there. Yeah. But yeah. you could take a, imagine being on a similar train to Berlin. So instead of being yeah. in Berlin in a couple yeah. of hours, what if you actually stop, not just at the big ones? Yeah. Yeah. But actually, that's, envision that's, yeah. envision being on on a train like that from Am from Amsterdam to Hong Kong. Yeah. And that's then a, yeah, tiny winds. That is so so much slower than I need to get here. Yeah. And the thing is that I actually think you can get to Hong Kong with it. I think it's much easier actually to get there by slowing down. Yeah. Than trying to what cut off corners or. Well, and wait for people to board the train too. Yeah, and but I think that along. yeah, and that is I think that is I think that that is a key for you now. Yeah. And how do you do that? Like the why, the focusing on that, and the slowing down. Yeah. So that when so so that when you when you enter the station and you halt and you open the doors, you can tell people. When people are like, okay, why do I need to hop on board? You're like, well, so you can tell them elevator pitch. This is why you want to get on board. Oh, okay. And then they come yeah. on board and then you take them along. But you don't go so fast that then they just sort of like G-force level are sort of like trying to stay upright in the train. Yeah. You just actually chug along so they can, you know, have your book and read it as the train goes along. And then there's somebody who walks by with some beverages and some snacks. and Yeah. Um, I'm really taking this to train metaphor to yeah. a whole new level. Because um, this is another thing, right? Like if you if they hop on board and then you go so fast that they feel like they're like, whoa, they get yeah. nauseous and they, you don't want that either. Yeah. So you want to make the journey pleasant. And yeah. not, not pleasant as in that you have to be complacent in your creativity, right? right? If you do crazy right. things, do crazy things, but sometimes slowing down a little bit or at least preparing yeah. them for the crazy thing a little bit. Yeah. I think that might yeah. help. Yeah. So that's what I have for you today. Wow. How was that? Because you've never done this before. No, no, I never have. You know, I have to say that I'm, I'm super visual and the the train and the fifth gear and the highway and the all that, it really helps. And then your visuals of the woman in the next car. She's not even in the next car. She's on top of the next car trying to get into my car. Yeah, it's like no, she's it's, chasing it's, you down. Yeah, yeah. She wants to come along. But also, these are the people who like the thrill. Yeah, yeah. And, and I and, think, so yeah. what I envision now is like, so the friend you recently talked to, yeah. this would be the person who jumps in front of the car and is like, could you stop, please? Yeah. So you, well, you because, got, yeah. So sh I think you, you. So recently, you've got somebody who was trying to pull the emergency brake. Yeah. Like hello, yeah. <laughs> like we're yeah. here, we're here, and we're trying, uh, but you need to give us something. But, and it's also because she's a friend, right? A, a reader is not going to take the time. An unknown reader, right? You know, we don't know each other. 
I'm not going to take the time to say, Hey, Bradley, if you slow down, you know, I'd buy more of your books. No, because they just, they just, they're like, oh, okay, this is going way too fast for me. And then they just, yeah. oh, well, they'll read something else. Yeah. 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 But can you imagine how many people would feel like your friend? Yeah. And who don't say anything or don't dare say anything or don't want to say anything. Because or whatever. Would you, would you read it? Would you yeah. read a book and be like, I didn't get this. And then write like write to the author and like, Right. I think I love what you're doing, but could you do it differently? I cannot explain right. how, yeah. but there is something that I'm just like, could you do it just could you just do something different? I cannot yeah. imagine. If if some if I'm reading something and for some reason the author or whatever they're writing doesn't resonate, I just I just I just leave the station and find something else. Yeah. Right. This is how you lose uh your your yeah potential audience yeah and you've shown by like the the speaking that if they are in a space you have yes them. yeah yeah so how do you do that with the books how do you yeah. get them uh, how do you, how do you in that space them? i had them for i mean it was only seven minutes right it's very timed and organized mm -hmm. i only have seven minutes and i had people coming up to me left and right afterwards you know, and I remember I was specific. I see this woman. She's coming from the other side of the room. She is beelining towards me. And then she's right in front of me and says, I've been tracking you down since last night. I want to tell you this. But with a book. So she's another I, person <laughs> on yeah. the top of the car waiting yeah. for you to roll yeah. down your window so she could jump in. Yeah. Yeah. She cornered you. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's so seven the, minutes speaking in front of a person. You know, the audience says only me. On, I'm the only thing going on, right? It's just me on stage with hundreds of people in the room, and they, I have their attention. You know, try that with a book, right? Who you? How do you hold on to somebody's attention for seven minutes? You have like seven seconds. You know, that's like Zip! there goes my train. Zip! Yeah. Oh, that one's gone. Oh, that was. I think it was blue. You know. Yeah. Where did it go? So, we don't even know. We don't even yeah, want to know, know where Whatever. it's heading to yet. Yeah, and then, oh, look, here comes another train that's going to stop in this station. It's going slow. And, oh, look, it's pretty and has red frillies on it. I'll take that one. Yeah, and it also doesn't go so fast that I lose yeah. my lunch while I'm on yeah, it. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it's such a it's such a roller coaster, right? So yeah. do, do you, because I'm, so this is the thing, like we, this was a very metaphorical conversation. Yeah. Do you think that will land in, I, I gave you a few few semi-practical things to work on yeah yeah but do you think this will land yes to the, to the extent that you're like okay now i know the way forward for me yes in practical terms well what's also interesting is that it's it's landing at a perfect time because i've been since the beginning of the year it's now june since the beginning of the year I've been searching for, I think, this call with you. And I, lo I love that when these things just come at the exact. And I love also that it's not just new. It's affirming a lot of the things yes. people are already telling you that signs yeah. are already there. Yeah. And then I, I think this works better because yeah. I'm not giving you this, this as a completely out of the blue. Like, yeah, it's more like. Yeah. It tells you, yes, the signs you thought were signs are signs. Yeah. Listen. So back to the train, it's you, you, you Mariella, but also Akashic Records are, are in front of the train on the tracks, you know, saying. So when we had this previous call, me saying, let's do this. That was yeah. me sort of saying, I can jump in front of your train if you want to. Yeah. And you were like. So, so you want it, you, you needed that. I, I know I need it. I want it. I, I, I was about to say, I'm, I'm tired of being on the train, but I'm, I'm not. I, I will always be on the train. I'll always be going 100 miles, 100 kilometers an hour, I, I think. I don't know. I've, I've never not been that way, I think. I've always been just a creating machine. So but it's going is... to take some doing to slow because... down the train. Yeah, so this is the thing, but how can you slow down the train without not being, like, it's the same with, like, 
you know, find the balance between the play and the like taking yeah. yourself seriously enough. Right? They're not saying, Bradley, playtime is over. Right. None right. of that's in there, right? Right. It, it, right. It, it even warned you, like pivot, but do not forget about the play. Yeah. So yeah. it's very much like do not do not become a different person. Yeah. Right. 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 Just slow down who you already are. Yeah. Uh, and really figure out. And I, I do think that figuring out the why and like the connection, knowing that and knowing why you're here for people, I think that will make it much easier to slow down because when you are really clear, this is why I'm here. This is what I want to tell these people. This is why I want these people on board. You have the drive to create a space for them to hop on board. Yeah. But I really love that it's it, this doesn't just sort of it's really a, I love the calls, especially when it's like, oh, this person's already on it. And this call yes. is like, yes, I just wanted to know that. So this is like, I'm not crazy. That these yeah. things that are yeah. happening everywhere, yeah. I am on this path and this is where I need to get. Yeah. yeah. Like af affirmation or confirmation. Yeah. So did it give you the clarity to know what to do? yes in a word yes and the courage to do it that's um yeah i think it's weird but and it's funny because i think i'm such a i'm full of courage person i'm like scared of nothing you know i'll do mm -hmm. anything but this is different this is slowing down the high-speed train and it's 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 not to the point of do I want to win over the jury instead of the audience? We're not, I, and I realize you're not saying that, and I don't have to sort of choose. No. But it's do I, do I, and you're also not saying, Bradley, park the train and take the bus, right? Train's done. No, no, we're saying no, no. the train's always going to keep going. If you would like some company on the train, then why don't we slow down and stop at a few more stops? Yeah, and then you can just immediately, and this is because actually, like, to make more, to just, you know, heap on more metaphors, we started this conversation talking about open doors, yeah. right? And basically yeah. how you've been creating is, hello, people, there are open doors. Yeah, yeah. So you're like, okay, so we talked about, when you see an open door, like, do you follow your curiosity or do you back away? But... If the open door swooshes by, you yeah. could only back away, right? If yeah. a really fast train yeah. goes past, there's a reason there's a line on the platform yeah. where you have to stay behind because if they go by so fast, you want to do that. Yeah. Maybe you've been sitting around being like, hello, I have 39 doors open, right. 39 books. Why isn't anybody following their curiosity? Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> because they're scared of their life, <laughs> because you keep yeah. going by so fast. Yeah. So if you look at it from the audience's perspective, yes, there is. A, is it an open door? They don't know. It went by so fast. Yeah. They they're just like I think that train was blue. Like that's all they that's yeah. all they got. Yeah. So and again, like you don't even have to stop stop right. You can just slow down enough so that yeah. people can hop on board right you don't really yeah. have to break yeah you have to break but you don't have to hold right just to, like because the doors are open yeah. and you're like you're like i've been letting people in where are they well you know <laughs> they're yeah. clutching their pearls on the platform yeah. <laughs> as you <laughs> as you swoosh by yeah that's what's happening right now well and also continue with the train if, if I had a, you know, what, um, what do they call that? Is that like a, a route plumber or something? Like I have, this is the train from Utrecht to Amsterdam. We're going to yeah. stop in, in Breukelen and Vaartsrein and Leidsrein and whatever. Here, here's the train from A to B and here's where it's going to stop. Right? Because otherwise, if they're on the platform, and yeah, they need to know. Coming. They need to know where they where they're going. Yeah, where are we going? And 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 what are the stops on the way? So, are you feeling that this is not what you're doing? 
No, I, offer, no. Because let me, I know we're trying to end this call, but we're not there yet. Let me remind yeah. you of the conversation we had when I drew this card. Yeah. I don't know if you've actually done it. I also really do not understand why I remember this because I usually do yeah. not. Like I'm usually when I do this kind of work, I'm so, I feel like I'm sort of protected because it leaves me. Right. Yeah. Like right, right, I don't right. have to carry that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I remember you talked about your plan was you already had like 10 books out by that time. Yeah. So way we've been very productive in the meantime, you were talking about um, republishing them in a particular order to give people a journey. Ah, okay. You yeah, were talking yeah. about that back then. Yeah. So that for me is like the route planner, the, uh, so yeah. like uh, Google maps, like how do I get like from right. A to B? Yeah. The navigational tool. Yeah. So are you saying that you've never actually created the navigational tool that you talked about in 2019? I have, but it's only in a language I understand, right? It's not a, it, it's not clear or obvious or, you know, here's the steps. No. So, so, it's a, so as good as no. Okay. Right? So basically, again, what you're saying, I have a train, my doors are open. I cannot tell you where we're going. I mean, I can yeah. tell you in my language, but how about you just trust me and hop on board? Yeah. That is not That's necessarily pretty much it. gonna happen. Because what no. people really like to know, are you going from Utrecht to Amsterdam and do you only stop at, what is it, Amsterdam Zuid? Yeah. Belmer? I don't know where it stops, the, yeah. the, 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 the faster um, one. Or right. are you gonna do the whole, I don't know. Like I said, I really don't know my topography here. Um, like, what are you? Because people want to know, like, on which one, like, yeah. you know, when they look at the board, they're like, I need to go there. Which train will get me there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, you know, so finally, we come back to that conversation we had then uh, when we just were getting to know each other, actually. And that is, again, it's like the, the, the direction, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you want to direct everything in a certain, but also, and this is like, because it does look a little bit like a, a ladder, it has all these yeah. lines. Mm -hmm. So you also want to create steps for these people. Yeah. Step one, step two. Yeah. Okay. So you, you kind of created it, but not in the language that people will, not in a language that, that is marketing wise. No. Open to a broader public. Also something to think about. Yeah. And not that difficult, right? I, I'm not talking about space exploration, right? I, I'm talking about things that exist and they're there. It's just, I, I need the route plumber. I need to say we're going from A to B. And here's you have to sit down. You have to, for this one, you have to park. Yeah. And actually explain to someone, okay, so... You start driving, second turn, you go left. Yeah. And the third one, we go right. Yeah. And then yeah. there's a roundabout. You take it three quarters. That's what you need to do. Yeah. And you have to, th this means you have to be, again, we come back to the message. When you're clear about your message, you'll be able to see this is the umbrella, right? This is the overarching yeah. arching message. Yeah. And this is the path that you can yeah. take. Yeah. And it can be a meandering path. That's completely fine. Right. But you can still explain it. And you have to explain why people need to take these particular steps to get to, to get yeah. the whole message. Yeah. But this means you need to slow down enough to figure out what is it that I'm trying to say and how can I explain that to people? Yeah. Which is yeah. Another, another part of the brain than sheer creation. Right. Right. It's right. like the it's like the, the blurb writing part of the book writing. Yeah. Yeah. It's a completely different. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is a creative process, but a different creative process. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I find that really interesting that we come back again because I know we talked about this back then. And like yeah. I said, I wow. don't know why I remember that. Yeah. My brain is a That's very amazing. scary space. <laughs> uh um that's a, there's a lot of depth there. Um, but I remember now that this is, a, you, you, when I was talking about direction, you were like, oh, this reminds me of my plan that I have. Like after Edinburgh, I want to like republish and then give them an actual order. Yeah. And so you've started that. 
Yeah. But you no, haven't... I did it. I, I did it. They, they're, they're all in order, but it's not explained well. You know, it's, they, they have a number. Here you it's, go. It, yeah, yeah. It, so it's it, like it, we're going from Utrecht to Amsterdam, but I don't actually name the stops. It's just one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it's just like yeah. <laughs> so when I so I said like you need to level up, right? Yeah. But finally, to level up, sometimes what you need to do is um, this is the wrong way to say it. Dumb down the message. Right. That's not how I want. Yeah. That's I'm like you need to simplify. Yeah. So for you to level up, you do need to come down to your audience's level yeah who are not with you uh you're like in front of the train steering it right. and trying to see if you can throw more coal in it that's not really how it works anymore these days i do get that yeah. but um yeah i am i mean let's just keep going and let's go faster yes so yeah. you actually and this is me doing this for you like somebody like like on your shoulder going like sir Right. Could you take a minute to explain not only where we're going, but why we're going there and why we're yeah. going in this particular order? Yeah. So there's a lot of slowing down. Yeah. It's perfect timing for where I am right now. I love that. I, I really love that. I really love that. Uh, yeah. It happens a lot that uh, when people say, let's do this, it's because they're already on the precipice. Like they're already yeah. poised to make yeah. that uh and that's that's why they're open yeah which is great because i know from not from experience luckily but i know from other akashic records readers that there are also people who are just like i have a problem i'm not necessarily ready to deal with it but i just want you to give me the quick fix by finding me some answer yeah and i very particularly do not want to work with clients like that and i think i said that i don't know if i even said that intention consciously but I have never, with this particular work, other work, yes, but with this particular work, I've never had someone who's just like, I have a problem, could you fix it for me? It's yeah. always people who are already in motion, or already doing the work. Um, and I love that. That's exactly, if I can give that affirmation, this, uh, this confirmation, uh, and yeah. some useful metaphors for you, so you can just, <laughs> you can, now you just yeah. see the train. Um, <laughs> Okay. Well, like I said, this is what I have for you today. Okay. I hope wow. that was useful. It, it sounds yeah, like very it. much, very much. So. Yeah, absolutely. It was. So this is was... your first trip. Yeah. So this is what an Akashic Records reading is. I go in, I channel messages for you. That's really, really yeah. it. Yeah. Wow. And like That's I said, like I, I really focus on working with people who do creative work. Okay. That's my sort of my niche. Um, yeah. yeah. Wow. So you fit you fitted that bill perfectly for me when you yeah. were like, ooh, what is that? Can we do right. that? Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. This has been wonderful and enlightening and delightful and fun and scary, you know, scary too, because there's some real stuff fun, in but, there. Yeah, but it's fun because you're not scared of any, everything. So then, then you know it yeah. hits something. <laughs> yeah. 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 But the good thing is I actually know you, so I will be able yeah. to track Okay. what you're up to yeah uh, and i'm sure because i think the last time we talked on your podcast we had a whole list of things yeah yeah to, <laughs> to, that's right and this is, so this is only the second this is episode one. <laughs> so i'm sure i'm sure we'll uh no but we also we, we lost touch a little bit because of the pandemic i think yeah um yeah. So yeah, I think we we will have more conversations like this in the future. Yeah. Yeah, so I can sure. keep an eye on you and be like, are you are you slowing down, yeah. Bradley? Are you doing the work? Are you letting yeah. people right. in on, on your train? <laughs> Poor people, completely. I see people windswept and just be like completely disoriented. <laughs> like I thought I wanted that. Yeah. Now we can we yeah. can we can take this metaphor very very far. Yeah. 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 Oh, wait, I, also, I love trains too. So. And I love slow trains, so it's perfect. I'm assuming that you have it is a slow train where you you have a sprinter, I'm guessing, or do you have the the big one? Uh, at your have... at your particular uh, both, station, actually. Oh. both. Actually, all three, even the even the well, not the Inner City Express, not the ICE. 
Oh, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, I see. That's the big. That's the 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 big one that goes to like Berlin and Paris yeah. and yeah, exactly. yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's just because you. It's a. It's a. It's a valid. It's at. I. Some. It's not broken. I think where you live is bigger. Uh, not necessarily. It's just a. Oh. It's just a like a hub for some reason of mm. train stop there. Yeah, I never know why. That, I never get cities. that. Yeah. yeah, it's probably some logistical thing. I don't know. But it's good because you love trains. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. I will let you go now. And uh, see, I told you this was going to take longer than we thought. Yeah, but this has yeah. really been fantastic. It's really been wonderful. And thank yeah, you so, so much. Yeah, so keep like keep in touch. I'm really curious um, what you're going to do with this okay. and how it's going to land. And uh, like I said, yeah. we'll, we'll talk again. Okay, great. Thanks, Mariela. Thank you.